So today we're going to look at an example of flood management scheme in the United Kingdom and we have looked at how um, Cockermouth, the River Cocker, has been managed. So why was the scheme required? Well, Cockermouth sits at the confluence of two rivers and that confluence means where two rivers meet. So we have the River Derwent and the River Cocker. And Cockermouth is found at this confluence where the rivers meet. So you can see that they would might have a, a risk of flooding because they have two rivers coming together and could mean that there's lots of water flowing through the settlement. The situation of the settlement is at the base of the hills in this location. So as you can see, we've got the sea just to the west, and then the hills rise up, which is where the rivers start up, um, where their source is up in the hills. So there was an extremely large storm that arrived across the Atlantic and as the air rose up over the hills, it caused more cooling and condensation, and we had a huge amount of rain falling onto the hills. And in a 34 hour period, we had a month's worth of rain falling onto the hillside. This caused lots of water to not have time to infiltrate into the ground, into the soil, which meant there was a large overland flow. So the water flowed over the land into the rivers and headed straight down towards uh, Cockermouth. And this caused widespread flooding. A hundred million pounds worth of damage was done to the town, its businesses and properties. Not only were the people directly affected but the wildlife as well were affected and as we saw when we watched one of our video clips there were geese wandering around the high street because where they were nesting on the banks of the river they couldn't nest there anymore so they had to find somewhere else and they were found wandering the high street so the environment had been affected because species were moved <coughs> moved forced from where they were living along the riverbanks there were quite serious damages done to businesses and one in particular was a wool shop and we talked about the wool shop being important you know, balls of wool strewn across the High Street because it hampered or slowed down the rescue efforts as the boats were going through the high streets trying to rescue people from who were trapped in buildings and rescue pets. The balls of wool actually got caught in the propellers which slowed down the rescue efforts. Unfortunately, one person lost their life trying to protect people from crossing a bridge over the River Derwent, and that was PC Bill Barker. And he was the only person who lost his life. A very sad scenario. Stopping people from travelling over the bridge because of the high water levels, it was very dangerous, and the bridge collapsed whilst he was standing on it. So because of the huge amount of damage that this caused, a multi-million pound strategy was developed to try and protect this area from future flooding and they focused largely on hard engineering. So along the stretch of the River Cocker you will now find a series of very large flood walls that have a variety of different designs. So about four million pounds was spent on this hard engineering. Some of the walls have got a glass top, so they've raised the height of the walls so that if it does flood, it can, can contain more water, therefore reducing the flooding risk and protecting properties. 
So, but when it's not flooding, people can still look through and enjoy the views of the river. Other sections of the flood walls, I have got the top section as an automatic raising barrier. So as the water starts to rise, it doesn't need anyone to turn a switch on. There are sensors and though that top part of the barrier will rise up. And this means that, again, another stretch of the river is protected, but it doesn't rely on people managing the defences. So it's automatically done. So that means areas of river cocker will be protected, properties will be protected, and it reduces the likelihood of economic costs to properties and businesses, people's homes, but also protects people's lives. Another way they tried to stop flooding from occurring was to use a technique called dredging. And this is where a digger is used to scoop out the base of the riverbed, so they dig out the base of the riverbed to increase capacity in the river. And that just means the river can carry much more water in times of flood, and therefore reducing the likelihood of a flood happening again. However, hard engineering does have its disadvantages. Building flood walls is very expensive. It costs a lot of money. Dredging damages the bottom of the riverbed and will it affect species such as um, fish that lay their eggs at the bottom of the river. They will um, be damaged and it takes time for the riverbed to recover and for species to come back. So there is, is some environmental impact there. However, these combinations of defences have proved to be successful since this flooding event. So a very effective although expensive, management scheme. It has now made the IT location safer. It do, some people don't like the fact that the, the flood walls are very large and it, they do look ugly. However, they are very effective in protecting the location. So that is our example of river management. And we've used the river cocker at Cocker Mouth.